Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Voidcast. Hold on. <clears throat> Voidcast? Fuck. What did I say? Voidcast. Welcome to the Voidcast, the endless black hole of despair and emptiness. A typical Thursday host. night. We are your hosts of utter depression and wanting to kill ourselves. I'm Justin, and with me always is Will. Am I really here? Shit. Gotta do better things. I'm not starting with that, I hope you know. Yeah, I know. Do you want to try? Yep. At least we know what we are cutting out. Welcome back, everyone, to The Voice Cast, where we compare your favorite voice actors to see which one's the best, which one's the worst, which one's the weirdest. I'm your host, Nixon, or Will, and my co- and my oh-so-generous co-host, Rando. Or Justin. AKA Bush. Bob You're Dole. Nixon, I'm Bush. Hey, I hope you guys really enjoyed our new theme song. My, Will, do you like it? My fellow Americans, I really like this theme song. Now, my buddy Tommy made that for us, the cover of We're the Sonic Underground from Sonic Underground. You can listen to what he has in all of his awesome 8 bit renditions, mainly of Mega Man and Cave Story songs, at youtube.com slash tpcool. And speaking of cool, we are looking today at the Ninja Turtle who is cool but rude. That's right, the one with the red headband. We are looking at Raphael. My second favorite turtle. Well, who is Raphael? Raphael, the red, head, the red bandana wearing turtle. Usually the muscle of the group, the most prolific fighter when it comes to raw strength and tactics alone. Normally will ram his head into everything until it dies or is defeated because the turtles don't kill. And in earlier renditions, Raph had a berserker mode where, along with the mutation of turning into a man-sized turtle, he also had a mental defect where he would suddenly gain bloodlust, which would cause a lot of his interactions in the Mirage comics to be him grunting or snarling, mainly because he couldn't think properly because he's angry and wants to wants to rip someone apart. Is that why the headband is red? I think that's the red oni, blue oni kind of thing. Eh, that works. Red oni, hot headed, oh, hot headed leader type. Blue oni, Leonardo, cold, cunning, calculating leader type. Purple oni, usually the bizarre one of the group. And yellow, normally the typical. The, the typical gets drunk, has likes to party type of Oni. Yeah, but it seems like that that the voice actors like life meets fiction because out of everybody, out of all the Ninja Turtles, Raphael has the most replacements that we've had to deal with so far. And it really so, is weird as to... The thing is, it's not from... It's not because... It spans multiple renditions. The first ever rendition of the cartoon, the 1987, has four voice actors. Four. Hal Rail, Rob Paulson, Tom Pinto, and Michael J. Go. We'll start with the opener, Rob Paulson. Don't you wish you could deliver lines like that with a straight face? Also known as... Calling him an... Well, we, by, by name alone, we shouldn't have to introduce him because it, it, it's Rob Paulson. But calling him an opener is that doesn't give the man justice at all for someone who was a part of part of Ninja Turtles for most of its ten season run. It's he's more than just an opener. He is the main act. He is the main act. But. You may also know him as Yakko from the Animaniacs. And then some, and then some. Mark Chang from the Fairly Odd Parents. So and soon to come, Donatello from one of the later Ninja Turtle series. Yeah, the 2012 one. Yeah, where he where he does end up end up actually encapsulating the character very very well. He found his place after like 30 years because he's not great as Raphael. With all due respect, Mr. Paulson. Eh, he doesn't do too bad as the uh, as the 1980s Raph. I mean, it's just like, like, I think it is just that separation thing, where it's just like, 
It's not usually the characters you see him play. Yeah, I'm not used to Rob Paulson playing like like kind of a sarcastic dick, you know? Or at least like one who who's just like the the tough angry guy or something. He's the guy who is who's usually the guy who's more clever who does outsmart people like Yakko Warner. Well, that is mostly true to form for Rob Paulson. He does play a really good, rude dude, Raphael. Then again, this Raphael, as compared to other Raphaels, is very toned down in the sense of violence. Yeah, but I think it's toned down too much. Like, it's it's hard to differentiate the other turtles. Like, like his whole thing is that, like, he's cool but rude. Um, which really seems to me like it's the kids' show's way of saying sarcasm. But all the turtles have sarcasm. So what makes Raph so different is that he's more sarcastic. I just don't think that that Raphael himself... Raphael is a great character, but here in this show, there is not... This, like, the pot has not been turned enough to really, to really justify him much as a character in my eyes. Compared to his other three, compared to the other three, I he's personally my favorite of the three, but not my overall favorite Raphael. I totally agree. Um, but we do have to mention them anyway. Um, first of all is Thom Pinto, who was in Race two... Bannon from Harvey Birdman. Uh, Race Bannon. I notice you're drawing a blank. Race not much here. Racer X from the New Adventures of Speed Racer. Yeah, sure. And I've never been in the sewers. Yeah, it's time for us turtles to catch some humongous mice. Bodacious notion. But well, like how? Sounds like April and Irma just found it for us. Okay, batter up. Visitors eight. Home team nothing. A hey, laser breath. Your mother wears steel sneakers. It doesn't matter. This guy is completely irrelevant to the whole thing. Because he was only in two episodes in season three. If you guys want to know, I'll save you some time. It was the Ninja Sword of Nowhere and the Turtle Terminator. Huh. I mean, he's he's trying to do the Rob Paulson thing. Well, he just does not just... have the same voice. No, no. It sounds like an Italian trying to be New Yorky. Which is weird, considering Brooklynese is usually Italian sounding. Plus pizza. <laughs> pizza pasta. Hey, we do not talk about his our Lord and Savior Vinny Pizza Pasta. <laughs> And for Rook, I thought I'd write a hell of 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 a Oh, man, I, my, my Judaism's showing. No, move on, move on. Please support Fine Sauce. So, overall, he really has no track record. But that can't be said for another one of them. The, the next one we'll be covering, Michael J. Go. No, let's, let's do Hal, let's do Hal first, because technically, chronologically. Okay, we'll stick to chronological. How rail? As in, getting there is half the fun. Well, maybe so, Master Splinter, but this is one turtle who likes speed. Hi, guys. Taking the train? No, thanks. I've got one at home. Oh, no! If Shredder's on the train... Now what? A sidecar? I feel ridiculous in these outfits. You should see how you look. Uh... He, he sucks. Now you can talk about Michael Jago. I mean... Like... This was a very strange thing to me because it's like the Ninja Turtles had this side season where they took a 12 episode trip to Europe and just the and for some reason Rob Paulson was the only one who didn't reprise his role for this season. This is like, one turtle who likes speed. He sounds like Inspector Gadget with a little bit of down syndrome. And just slow down in time, apparently. Well, quaaludes do that to people. Yeah. Know your drugs. <laughs> don't do quaaludes. Anyway, I don't think that this—I don't think this voice clip from behind the voice actors really gives him 
a lot of credit. It's a really bad, shitty line line that he had where he really does does sound uh, man, he sounds like this. Uh, like a like a villain in a Hanna Barbera cartoon. But like I hear him in like one of those like episodes that he did do, and it's just comparatively, I wish that he just he just sounded like Inspector Gadget throughout the whole thing, but he sucks. He is terrible. Oh, can't fault the guy for trying. And lastly, Michael J. Go. Please, April, can't I just pull my shell over my head and take a nap for a few eons? Surprisingly, keeps up with, really keeps up with Rob Paulson for notable roles, though his being a bit more niche. Like, for example, in the Diablo games, he's Deckard Cain, and he's Gopher from Winnie the Pooh. You don't say. I can't cause a whistle between my teeth. Please don't do that. Please don't do that either. He was also uh, George Washington in Time Squad. Now, Go exclusively was in the last season of Ninja Turtles. Um, and, and the tenth season really does kind of have that air of we're going downhill. It was a good run, fellas, but the ship is sinking. Because Rob Paulson didn't going come down. All on account of the weather. I wish I was a relio Voltaire. A relative? No, Voltaire, you idiot. Did, whatever. Rob Paulson didn't come back to voice Raphael in the final season. I have no evidence of why. I tried to connect to him on on Twitter. He did not respond. He probably didn't even see it. Um, my theory is that it was around the same time when Pinky and the Brain cartoon came out, and just like around the time when his when Rob Paulson's career just started to really explode. Then again, this was created by Deke, and he would be do he would be greasing elbows with Warner Brothers. Obviously, you're gonna go for Warner Brothers. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so Rob Paulson left. They decided to get a cheap actor with no experience. This is Michael J. Goes. First ever role. And he does fine for a newbie. He does fine, and then his his career escalates quite a lot. Yeah, it's like Cam Clark. Like, he was in Ninja Turtles, and it all started from there. Well, Cam Clark also has notoriety from his, from his, ro- ro- from his relation to the King family. So even if, he, even if he didn't make it in voice acting, he would have made it in performance regardless. Eh, fair enough. Man's a singer. And part, I think, a dancer, mostly a singer. Well, so is Rob Paulson. We can speak of singing. Also I think call it's him... time for Will to sing the high praises of the '90s Ninja Turtles movie. I just wanted to say one thing before we move on. Raphael is the best Raphael. What? Raphael. Rob Paulson. That's what I thought he said. So, 1990s Ninja Turtles movie. Uh. Josh Pies. A Jose can say go back. Tell me, you didn't pay money for this. I only have I only have one note of Josh Pies. And that's Raphael. Yeah. Josh Pies is Raphael. And I only have one all that I have written in my notes about him is it sounds like Raph ate John Panette. It's not okay. Burn him. <laughs> well, for the first uh, for for the 1990s movie this this attempt at Raphael is honestly one of my favorites he gets that real new york accent the one that hits me deep in my heart of hearts see this... i think it goes i i don't get me wrong i love raphael with the new york accent but i think it's way too much <laughs> well that's the if you have a new york accent Flaunt it! Don't 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 water it down. That's insulting. Ham it up. <laughs> Besides, this is the nineties. Nineties was big Brooklynese. It was gr- he was great. See, all that I think of myself right now is is that he sounds like John Panette. Panette's from Boston. 
It's a it's a fake New York accent. It's a Boston accent. It's not true. It's a it's a lie. Abort. 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 What are you talking about? Are you stupid? Now, I Bo finally Bostonian got Bostonian Brooklynese does sound very similar because they're both northeastern uh north yeah, northeast accents. In the same way, a Tennessee, uh, Tennessee drawl, and uh, no, wait, a, a Louisiana drawl, and a Tennessee, no, wait, a Texan twang, and a Tennessee drawl sound similar, both in the South. Okay. Now, I finally got a chance to watch all these movies just this week because over the past two weeks, I did not have enough time. Um, and first movie's good. I like it. I don't think it's a masterpiece or anything like everyone says it is, but you know what really pisses me off about it? Do tell. It's that the people who grew up with the 87 version praise this darker rendition of the Turtles that takes inspiration from both the cartoon and the Mirage comics... And they love it for that. They love that it's dark, darker. And they hate the other ones because it's not as dark or as serious. But then those same people, when they look at the 2003 one, are like, uh, uh, no, it's too dark and serious. I don't want to talk about this. It's like, motherfuckers, give, give shit a chance. If you learn anything today from our podcast, learn to give shit a chance. Because all those people who bitch about the 2003 one who end up watching it, end up loving it. Change isn't always bad. No, it's not. Speaking of change, though, Josh Pies did not keep his role as Raphael during the 90s movies for very long, because in the second one, Secret of the Use, he's replaced by Lori Fazzo. Come on, Leo. What do you say? Let's do it, eh? Lori Fazzo, a prolific voice actor for the time. He was four people in Transformers. That's uh, that's that's about it. Yeah, but do you remember any of them? I do remember Orion Pax. What the hell is it? Is, is this like a gender bend version of Optimus Prime? No, it, it that's a male. Is it male? That that's a male programmed. Yes. Oh. oh. Oh, Ryan. That's what I know about robotic anatomy. Well, his his name is Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Uh... And in the third movie, he'd be voiced by Tim Keller, who would only voice Raphael in this. Nothing, huh? Well, too bad, because if something was bothering you, I got a little present here to cheer you up. It's called a yo-yo. It's yours. Made it for you. I was going to give it to you tomorrow, but, you know... Things might get a little nuts. I might forget. You know, I did say that, like, we'd have to end up watching the third movie um, because of, like, the constant voice actor changes. But turns out I was very wrong. The only turtle who who had voice actor changes for the third movie between the first one was Raphael. So, fuck you, Raphael, for having me to watch the third movie. But also, it wasn't that th bad. Don't give me that. I'm getting to that, Scott. But also, thank you, Tim Keller, for l giving me the chance to watch Turtles Three because I had so much fun watching that movie. It's a great movie. You're so fucking impatient. You know that. I like the movie. <laughs> I do too. I watched it with you. It was a great time. I mean, Raphael was not my favorite part part in it. Um. That, that honor definitely goes to Donatello, but it was just a fun, stupid time. Like, I like my turtles with having some stupidity. Corey Feldman, everyone. Corey Feldman, but we'll cover that next week. Yep. Oh, um, speaking of and... silliness, interjecting to help us transition a little more forward in time, did you know Matt Hill, Ed himself from Edna and Eddie was Raphael in The Next Mutation? Yeah, I did. Of all the places, suddenly Matt Hill. 
That is so strange. That should strange. be a running gag. Suddenly Matt Hill. <laughs> that, I, I, I didn't watch The Next Mutation. I saw like a couple episodes and that was like a while ago at a friend's house and I wasn't even paying attention. I watched five minutes for this, and I was like, let's not do this well. And you were like, okay. But things would get better in 2003, where Raphael is voiced by Greg Abbey. Smooth one, kid. Using poor, helpless Mikey to score a lunch date. Greg Abbey is a four kids, mo was is a mostly four kids actor, but plays a lot of lead roles. Like being see. Yugi, Yugi Moto. From Duel Monsters, Tristan Taylor, serious well, from a, Slayer's Try, rendition, right? The original 2001, and he's always been Tristan. I thought it was Dan Green all the way. No, Dan or Green Yugi. was Yami Yugi. Well, was Atem. Then why is Greg Abbey also Yami Yugi, according to Find the Voice Actors? What? Yeah. He was also Sam Rigel. It is Dan Green in a different thing. He was also Liam Dyfell in Shaman King. And he is the predominant Tristan Taylor voice. Uh. Man, I really like Greg Abbey as Raphael. Oh, he's perfect as Raphael. Absolutely perfect. I do. F oh, God. Uh, I don't want to say this because I'm going to become a hypocrite in the next few minutes, but like, God, that, that gruff, that New York accent, it's just works so fucking well for him, you know? Yeah, like, well, like, look at the belt buckles on these yahoos! Like, New York encapsulates, the turtles are encapsulated by New York, the same way that Spider-Man is, but Raphael is the one that just has to have the accent. Like, he's the one who has that New York grit more than any of them. Which is true, because he typically plays the New York stereotype. Rude, crude, aggressive. He, he he's, he's, he's the one where the city left the most imp implant on him. Or imprint. That's the word, imprint. Just like with, Jap with, just like with Japan's culture, Leo had the most, uh, was the most implant, imprinted. Yeah, um, probably because Raphael spent a lot of time running, a running away and just like exploring the upper ground by himself. Like in the first that... movie where he went around in a trench coat and would go see a movie. Yeah. Oh, fun fact! Fun fact: the person in the taxi cab, uh, rolling back to the nineteen ninety movie, the person in the cab was who asked, "Was that a giant turtle?" Or what the hell was that? That was Raphael's voice actor. Not the cab driver, the, the 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 person in the taxi. That's pretty okay. cute. That's cute. I like it when suit actor does something and voice actors in 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 somewhere some in so out somewhere. It's like Stan Lee appearing in his own movies. Rest in peace. Yep. Uh, twenty seven Ninja Turtles movie. We've talked about this one a lot already, so I'm just gonna make this quick. It's Nolan uh, North, everyone. You are so smug! You know that? You think the world revolves around you, don't you? That we couldn't possibly survive without the mighty and powerful Leonardo to guide us to our problems, huh? Well, I got a newsflash for you. We got along just fine without you! The quintessential voice actor, which I don't really consider as a good thing. Like, it's Nolan all North, that I, though. All that I hear from this performance is Nolan North doing a New York accent. I do not hear Raphael. You know? I hear Drake. What? I hear Drake from Uncharted. Kind like, of fits, Nolan, but it's, like, I, I just hear Drake. Like, Nolan North kind of has... He's most well known for the same voice. Not, not saying that like he only does one voice. We're not talking about Tara Strong here. Um, but he's known for doing just like, like, like Desmond, Desmond Miles. Hi, I'm Desmond Miles. Nathan Drake. Hi, I'm Nathan Drake. Raphael. Hey, what's going on? I'm Raphael. You know what I mean? It's just like, Unless he's Deadpool, I'm, then his voice fluxes all weird. Fair enough. Uh, that's just the just energy a, in the character. Just another cocky douchebag. Eh. 
And it's good, it's good, but it's just not my favorite. And I have my reasons for my favorite being my favorite. Backtracking a bit, we'll be covering the Turtles in Time movie, Turtles Forever. It's not backtracking if it's the same, if it's chronologically the same year. We keep going over this, goddammit. So along with Greg Abbey being Raphael, we also get Sebastian Arcellus who plays the 1987 rendition. A mind like a steel trap, this one. Know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but... Did you get a perm job or something? You look, uh, different. Another four kids actor. Rex okay. Raptor, Esperoba, Yo A Asakura from Shaman King, and Rex Owen from Dinosaur King. Okay, unpopular opinion, Will? Yeah. I think he's better than Rob Paulson. I would agree. Okay. Great. It's just as he not only is it a great Rob Paulson impression, but it's just Haydn. Like there's more gruff in there. He's got that New York accent accent down. Probably because he's actually like raised in in New York, like, he's got a lot more experience than you would expect from a typical four kids actor. He's a Broadway man. Um, but it's just, like, it just, I mean this in the nicest possible way. He makes Raphael sound more more smarmy, and it works so well. Yeah, I agree. And he was born in New York, New York. Yeah, like I said. Uh, it's extra authenticity. And a surprise... For the Mirage Raphael, Sean Schemmel. <coughs> you would. I could go for a slice, though. Sean Schemmel. Goku. I mean, I don't know. It's just... Which, surprisingly, people don't... People tend to not cover this, but... Schemmel was, a uh, He was... He, he was a four kids. He was a four kids voice. People don't talk about this? No, people don't talk about him being such great things as Amidama, Amidamaru from Shaman King or a lot of voices in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. He was a majority of the class. Uh, 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 he was some very important people. Mainly, Velian Crowler. Which Just the now gay guy looking... from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX who liked to battle with giant stones. Which, looking back at it, I, I, I do hear... I do hear the similarities, holy shit. But yeah, Goku played the 19, uh, the 1980s, the, the 1987 turtle. No, wait, the, the, the 1986, the Mirage turtle. And you know. while most of his voice work is grunting, except for the end where he, he, he had some pretty good lines, like, I could go for a slice. He definitely has that New york -y charm. Yeah, I can hear that. You would. I mean, I mean, it's not Greg. It's not the Greg Abbey kind of balancing. Of but it's like there. It's there, all right. In New York and still actually being a good person. But yeah, I could, I could still see it. Very good, very good attempt. Definitely fits with his other three Mirage voice actors. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see it. I can totally see it. So you're supposed to be the rest of us in this comic. I yeah, I see it. it. I don't see it. Speaking of which, like, like you were saying, you were like defending Michelangelo, just like it's like, yeah, this kind of nasally voice, like this is known for New York. But you consider that you don't consider that more New York than than like Raphael's kind of New York, right? Just like the hey, how's it going? Uh. The more nasally is in the more Jewish neighborhoods of New York, which are commonly in Manhattan. Well, actually, not even Manhattan. Brooklyn and Queens. Certain areas of Brooklyn and Queens, you definitely hear that nasaliness. I would know because I'm on the, I'm on one of the borders to a lar to I'm on the border to Forest Hills, where there are a lot of Jewish communities. Yep. Um, you know, there's a, there's a Forest Hill, like, in, in, like, Florida, where I am, um, and, 
And as you know, there are a fuck ton of Jews here. Yeah, it's almost as if your state is the retirement state. You're saying that like it's new information. Nothing in Florida is new. It's all nope. old. The only thing that's new is the constant amount of teenagers who just are desperate and want to Then leave. again, that's the that's the 21st century for you. Yeah. So, we've been delaying this long enough. Um, 2012, we, we had, like, probably my favorite rendition of Raphael um, with character actor Sean Astin. <sighs> We're wasting our time. The Krang aren't going to show up. Intel? You mean April told you. Or we'll sit out on a cold roof all night for no reason. We have to find that guy and break his phone and his face. Sensei, he was the angriest, nastiest guy you ever met. You should have heard the insults this guy was throwing at us. They were so insulting. Sean Austin, also known as the most dominant voice for Shazam! Hercules yep. from Kingdom also, Hearts, from um, our favorite. Also, just... Just a character actor since he was very young. He performed in the Goonies as a little kid. And most recent and most recently, he was Bob in Stranger Things season two. He was also Lonnie Loud from The Which, Loud House. What? I just yeah. wanted to mention the Loud House because I like the Loud House. Just I like it too. Okay. Oh man. Sean Astin's my favorite. I can see why. Like he's not okay. my favorite, but he is he is up there. Okay, let me let me state my case, right? Go like, ahead. This was hard because in my head for like half of my research I was thinking to myself like it's got to have that accent. It's got to just really have that gruffness to it. So I was really aiming towards Greg Abbey. Um but here's the thing, right? Yeah. When it all came down to it for me, who was the better actor. Sure, Greg Abbey can do a great rough and tumble New York type guy, but can he challenge the role and like put Raph put his voice into different places, places that match Raphael's situations? Um, Sean Astin can definitely do that. Like, like Sean Astin's voice, first of all, like there's some great subtlety to it where it's like, He's one of the only voice actors that I see that really that really likes to throw in a little bit of the fact that the word teenage is is one of the attributes of the mutant ninja turtles. Like you can hear a little bit of that adolescence in his voice through the through the anger and the yelling and the sarcasm. Um it also helps that that the writing gives like, puts the turtles in new and interesting situations, situations that challenge the voice act actors himself, especially Sean Astin. And I was wondering, like, what if Greg Abbey is put in a different situation? Like, I compared the... Well, do you remember in the 2003 version when that one villain like separated all the turtles to go into separate dimensions and Donnie had an episode where he went into the future 30 years where where Splint where Shredder ruled the world I do remember yes I watched that one that episode for Greg Abbey's Raphael from 2003 and I watched the three parter of the 2012 where where essentially the world became Mad Max. And Sean Astin, it's subtle again, but it's like Raphael is bigger, he's much older, he's got a beard, but you can still hear just like... just Which like, is weird to me. I know. You can still hear his voice, but it also has that age. It still has that experience in there. And just like the... the Just like the... Ugh, fucking why do I even bother... Meanwhile, you see Greg Abbey in a similar type of situation, and he sounds exactly the same. It's 30 years later, 
there should be some more like strain on his voice, but no, it's literally the exact same fucking thing. I mean, Michelangelo in that episode had more gruffness. Um, Leo had it a little bit too, but there was nothing with Raph. At the end of the day, Sean Astin is not just, the, might not exactly be a better voice debatably, but he he's a better is performer in your a opinion. better actor performer that's the thing that people forget it's their voice actors you can like you can do an accent until the cows come home or you can do a great christopher walken impression i'm like something like that but the question is what can you do with that voice that can sounded you... like rodney dangerfield this is christopher walken you scrub yeah, now can you do that while he's drowning? My name is Christopher Walken, and I'm drowning. I'm really drowning here. I could use some oxygen. Burn. Anyway, I think I made my point. Yeah. Speaking of cowbell, Rise of the Ninja Turtles, where Raph looks more like he's built like a bull than a, a turtle. We have to talk about Michael Bay. Do we have to? I'll give you three words. Just do three words and then we'll move on. That's a different kind of bull if you asked me. Ha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Okay, Alan Richson. Give me the camera. If you don't give me the camera, I'm gonna... Fuck. I only saw Batman once. See, she's looking at us like we're freaks. I bet that's why you took our picture, wasn't it? Show your friends. Looking for this? No. We do what Leo says. Lead the way. Cowabunga. Just give it three words. Go. Uh... Great. Let's move on. In 2018, we got Rise of the Ninja Turtles. With Omar Benson Miller. More known for his live action work. Huh? Oh. Oh! Hey, hey guys, hold up. Poor thing looks lost. <laughs> oh. Hey, little guy. What you doing here? Mm -hmm. You knew you come to Big Raffy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Pets love me, all right? I really like this, Raphael. Really? <laughs> he's He's definitely filling my weird... He's definitely fearing, feeling my. He's definitely filling the weird category in my book. Man, like, is it opposite day or something? Like, I can't believe that you're praising Rise for something. The Raphael's pretty good, and I like that they made. Story wise, I like that they made him the leader. Omar himself, not too bad of an actor when trying to put on the tough guy act. The overall, it's a little too comedic and cutesy and modern day pandering for me, but he does a good job of playing Raphael because Raphael cutes. did have a he did have a bit of uh, sweetness to him in, in other in in the two thousand and three. Like despite him being a scamp, he did have a heart of gold. Yeah, and that that is shown very strongly with this, like. The love of animals has always been there. The love of kids has always been there. But it's just more emphasized because now Raphael just has this giant fucking body. And I like it. Big, beefy turtles. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much what he looked like in that Mad Max episode of the 2012 series, actually. Though, to be honest, he looks a little more like Terrapin based on his size alone. I don't know who that is. Terrapin was... Terrapin was one of the mutants, was one, was uh, a mutant snapping turtle. In Secret, in, in the second movie, Secret of the Ooze, he's the, he's the companion of Razor. That is not his name. Oh, sorry, not, well, what was his, who was he again? Keep talking, I'll figure it out. Because I know that's the basis for Terrapin. I know that for damn sure. Oh, it's Taka. That's Taka it. Taka and Terrapin are relatively no. related. Yeah, Taka and Razor. There are a lot of just like super mutant turtles. Not that I should be surprised, but meh. Eh, I don't know. Um, out of all of the renditions from Rise, Raph 
don't get me wrong, this one is still good, but it's not my favorite favorite rendition of of the Turtles in that series itself. Um, but you know what? Good on you, man. Good on you. Yeah, really good try. And I presume that you want to quickly mention the Jonan Vasquez short again? I do. Okay, go ahead. For the Jonan Vasquez short, we complete our... We complete our trio. We complete our trio for the Workaholics Boys, where he's played by Adam Devine. Raph challenged me to a fight to prove me and my inventions wouldn't be enough to save me from his... Uh, my perfectly tuned fight engine! Right, and I laughed and said something like, Perfect tuna fight engine? And that's when he hit me in the head with a can. It's clear. We're evenly matched in fighting. No! I don't back down until there's a winner! You know... I, I, I really like this, his Raph. I like his Raph, too. Like, Adam Devine is really, like, kind of has this character of just being just like a... I don't know. What's a nice way to say douchebag? Jockey. Nah. I like that he's very show-offy and jock-like and I'm a flex on you because I can. It's very yeah. Raph. Like... Like Adam a caricature, seems... yes, but very wrath. What I'm saying is that Adam Devine... His perfectly a... tuned fight engine! Perfect tuna fight engine? Perfect tuna can fight engine? And then he hit me in the head with his can. Uh, like, Adam Devine is known for just, like, being just, like, one of those, like, cool guy. I just kind of... The dude who just kind of, like, has all the answers. Tried to keep himself composed. I guess. I don't... That's that's what I see from the actor himself, but it's just so much fun. To, clearly, the dude's having a time of his life and just like doing something that's so not like him. I mean, it would definitely make sense to me if he was a turtles fan. He got to. It's like giving a. Wait, I get to play my favorite turtle. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah. He definitely plays. You 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 can see the heart in his Raphael. I see the heart in all of it. Like that's what I love about the short so much, and what I why I appreciate you bringing it up is that it's just so much fucking heart, you know, like, like, f like fucking that that stupid Asian boy from Captain Planet does not have nearly as much heart as this fucking short does. Oh, agreed. African. I'm not racist. I swear. Indian. The heart boy is Indian. Is he? Yeah, so he's technically Asian, yes. Oh, ne never mind. D oh, omit that last statement, please. So. Yeah, Mati. Actually, no, fuck. He's, he's Brazilian and Native American. Okay, re- Okay, unomit the omission. Yeah. I'm racist again. See, we only admit it when I'm right and he's wrong. Uh, <laughs> That's probably gonna get omitted too. Up, up, up! Oh, oh God! Up or up? Final thoughts, Will. Final thoughts, please. Final thoughts. Rocky start for Raphael, but as soon as the '90s hit, really did an improvement based on what we've, of course, seen. But overall, he's a voice that got better with time. A little slow down, like we all go through, but ends it on a pretty good note. Where are your uh, rankings? My best is, without a doubt, going to Greg Abbey. The worst going to Tom Pinto. And the weird one going to Omar. Okay. Also, looking at Sean Astin, he looks a lot like Seth Rogen. <sighs> yep. Okay. How about you? Oh, boy. Um, Best is Sean Astin. Worst is Matt Hill. You think and, Matt Hill is worse than and, the other schlubs who had to do him in the 1987 cartoon? I honestly don't. <laughs> okay, omit that too. Okay, best is 
Best is Sean Astin. Worst is Hal Rail. And weirdest, although I don't hate this, is Sebastian Archilis. Arcelis? Sebastian, you did a good. You improved you... on a staple voice actor's rendition. You get our honorary cool but rude award. Which is which is somewhat relevant because in the 2012, Rob Paulson did come back to play the 80s Raphael. And you still beat him in performance, in my opinion at least. Yeah, good on you, man. Now, if you, our lovely audience, audience, like the show, please give us a like, subscribe, the usual kind of shit. And please, we want to keep this discussion going. Who is your best? Who's your worst? And who's your weirdest? We want to hear it down in the comments below. Um, keep up to date with what we're doing on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash thevoicecast. And we will see you guys later. For Donatello in our final month, in our final week of Turtles Month. Goodbye. Turtle power. <laughs>